Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Conversations for Peace. I'm Marcy Newman, your Heart Shift Coach, and today is day 23. So we are post-International Day of Peace, and as you can see, these conversations are taking place, lingering, because each and every one of us needs to both have them and to hear them and to know that this energy is still streaming out from our hearts and calling us forward. So today I have a wonderful guest, Dr. Monica Bennett. And um, Monica is a doctor of naturopathy. She's also a reflexologist, a life coach. Um, and from what I know about her, it seems like she's been on this lifelong quest to connect body, mind, and spirit, uh, both within the human and the energetic being. And so we're going to hear more about all of that concept and that perspective in relation to peace. But first, I have to welcome you, Monica. I'm so excited to have you here. Oh, thank you, Marcy. And it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. And of course, we have to start right off. And we need to know, what's peace to you? It's a wonderful topic, especially what's going on in the world today. Yes. It, it, it is probably one of the biggest challenges most people are facing because there's so much anxiety, so much turmoil, so much polarity, and people are losing their peace over the COVID, the elections, the environment, what's going on on every front. We're being challenged to be peaceful in a time of crisis on every front. So it, it, it's a huge topic and one that I am very much engaged in and keeping my peace. Peace to me is going, diving deep underneath the turbulent waters, really, really staying calm, finding that place within, that spiritual place within that can rest assured that everything is always going to be okay. For me, it was a practice, for sure. But I know that if you can find that and knowing that, that water that's always turbulent on top, if you dive deep enough, the water on the bottom is calm. And that's the same thing with, with us. If we go deep enough within ourselves, we have to take that deep dive within ourselves to find that peace. And it's there. It's always there. It's this calm center that is always perfectly still when we take the time, the things that take the time to reach it and to connect with it. But Monica, what about the undertoes? We know that they exist also, don't they? And go deeper. <laughs> they, they, pull us, they pull us down. And as you were speaking about the tumultuous waters that are all around us in the yeah. world and in our everyday lives now, right? So at one point, maybe there was all of this conflict and turmoil outside of us. And we would look at it and say, oh, but that doesn't really relate to me. Yeah. Or, oh... Yeah. I can look at that and not really feel it because it's not affecting me. Well, yeah. hello, life has changed. And yeah. more than being outside, we are being pulled inside, right. but we're bringing with us a lot more of this turmoil. So this undertow is very relevant and it's almost as if we're getting pushed from the top, sucked from the bottom, and there's this full-on intent to just keep dragging us down. What do we do? Well, in naturopathic terms, it's called a healing crisis. Everything has to bubble up to the surface to be healed. It was stuffed, it was always there, it was always there. It was, it was actually just getting worse because we weren't dealing it with the turbulence, really. We, we, we're living in an addictive society, in an addictive culture, addictive mindset. We were on a, a path 
and we weren't really being conscious. We were just going through the motions. 2020, everybody thought it was going to be a great year, the year of clarity, the year of vision. We going forging ahead with, with so much determination. However, we didn't clear our lenses. <laughs> so if we don't clear our lenses, it's cloudy. We, we didn't have the clarity. You, you have to do the work. If you want to heal, you've got to go down deep and do the work. So we're being pushed from every which way. As you said, it's true. There's no getting away. It's in our homes. It's We go outside. It could be right in front of us. There's no getting away from it. So the only place to go is within. Just the only place to go now to find that peace. And knowing that we'll always be okay, but it's, it is it is a healing crisis. It's got to bubble up. You've got to feel all the things that we've been stuffing, all the emotions we've been stuffing, we've been stuffing and stuffing. We didn't want to deal with it. We didn't want to look there. We didn't want to see it. Now it's bursting out and we have to face it. We have to go through it together collectively and individually for it to heal. The micro and the macro are the same. We're all connected. We are really, really all connected. And if we can see there is no separation, we're all in this together, we can help each other. But we have to find that part of our heart center that's compassionate. It's not gonna come from here, it's gonna come from the heart. It, it, it will never come from the intellect, it'll come from the intelligence. This is an electromagnetic instrument, more than just a pump. And when we connect, on that level, we'll find the compassion, we'll find the wherewithal to find solutions. But we got to work together, get the clarity, get the, 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 the fog out of the lenses to really look clear, to really have a vision. The, I mean, it says in the Bible, people without vision shall perish. People didn't really have a vision. We don't have a vision. We've got to find, we got to do the work we got to have the tools to meditate, to go deep, to really center ourselves, to find that center. And uh, again, it, it takes work. It's not going to come. Just peace doesn't come by itself. It, it, it's, it's contemplative prayer. It's contemplative thought. It's contemplative consciousness. Be the observer of your own thoughts and emotions. So tell me if I'm correct in what I'm about to say, but what I'm gathering from what you've shared is that what's unique about 2020 is that as we were before keeping everything outside of us and seeing ourselves as separate from it, that all of this infiltration, you might say, of this, you know, this turmoil infiltrating our personal space now is demanding not that we turn from it, but that we actually turn towards it in order to heal these parts of us that we're living in separation. Is that what you mean? Marcy, you're right on. That's exactly what I mean. You got to go through the dark night of the soul. You got to go through your suffering and your, I mean, I, I don't think we, we don't have to suffer, but we have to feel our feelings. And for a long time, I don't think people, we, we tune out, we'll watch television, we'll eat too much, we'll shop, we'll do anything but avoid What's a, it, because it doesn't affect us. As you said before, Marcy, it didn't affect us, so I can go on living my life and do the things that I always done. But we see that there's an evolutionary consciousness emerging, a new paradigm is emerging, and we've got to realize we are all connected. There is no separation. The heart connects us through compassion, and we've got to learn to have that compassion for one another. If the, the polarity today of of your way is right, my way is right. We're not, we're bucking heads. We'll never get together that way until we learn to have a conversation and communicate. The word communicate comes from the word commune. 
to come together. So when we learn how to come together, what is our common ground? What are us? We're more alike than we are not alike. Whether the color of our skin, the country, the language, the culture, we all want to live well, our families to live well, to have food and sanitation and hygiene. We, we all want these things. But when we learn to help each other and we collaborate and cooperate, we can start to um, heal and find that peace. It's, and it's like the body in naturopathy. Cells that are not communicating with one another are at dis-ease starts, dis-ease. When you're at ease, when you're at peace, the body is one and it's healthy and you're in homeostasis. Everybody is in uh, that fight or flight. And when you're in fight or flight, your sympathetic and your parasympathetic are, you know, your gas pedal's going on, off, on, off, on, off. So the anxiety is overwhelmed. Depression is overwhelmed. Your mind, your pituitary produces um, hormones, stress hormones, cortisol and uh, such, and it goes into the body. That lasts for about 23 hours, those stress hormones. If you do that every day, look what you're doing to your body. Oh. So when your body's at peace, when the communicating cells are communicating properly, you're in that parasympathetic. You can move, you can sway, you can be at peace. What's ever going on outside, all the tur turbulence, and that's peace when you can be amongst the turbulence, but be centered within yourself. And it, again, it doesn't happen overnight, but it does take practice. Like eating well, it's a discipline. Uh, avoiding things that whether you're listening to or hearing or seeing, stay away from those things that will cause that anxiety and stress, right? I mean, it makes sense, but we're an addictive culture and addictive society until we hit bottom like an addict. And that's what we're doing. We're hitting bottom. We're not going to rise up. I really like the, um, I don't like it. <laughs> I, I appreciate, you know, the analogy with addiction. Because from my perspective, I think that this is exactly what kicks in so often, right? Mm -hmm. Is, as you said, the addiction to zoning out rather than zooming in. <laughs> and um, zoning out means that we also have to zone out of our feelings, That's zone right. out of our thoughts, zone out of our beliefs, zone out of all the aspects of ourselves that could actually lead us back to where we really want to be. But we're so addicted to being out here mm -hmm. that that's the energy that we end up feeding. That's right. That's cor yeah. exactly correct. That's exactly correct. I really see the parallels of globally, we are an addict society. We're addicted to consumerism rather than being a citizen of the planet. We are so, we you know, television says, buy this, do that, have this. You got to have more, 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 more now and again. That's the addict, more now and again. And that's, we, we, we get addicted to that. It's never enough. It's never enough. We got to feed, 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 feed it, feed it, feed it. And to a point where it's going to combust. It's just going to combust. And that's exactly what we're doing. It's a healing crisis. We got to come back to our center. What do we need to do to heal? And it's going to get worse, unfortunately, before it gets better. It's so, just... It's understandable when you hear something like this, why people run in the other direction, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, that might be first instinct. Run. Oh, my God, this is going to hurt, right? Or this is going to... Go flight. Fight, yeah, start, fight or flight. But what you're describing is that it's okay. The fight or flight is there, but yeah. you also have the same systems for bringing you back. Correct. And then Correct. being able to sustain this whole new way of being, this new energy, 
and what freaking miracles we are. Truly. Really? Truly. truly. We, we're always evolving, like we're always expanding and expressing. And in neuroscience, we have the fight or flight in the limbic brain, the reptilian brain to, for survival. And, and, and we need that there. And that's been since, since we've eat, you know, came upon the planet. We have that survival reptilian brain, the limbic brain and the emotional brain. But within the last, I forget how many thousands of years, we developed a, new, a neocortex, which means new, neo is new. And then we develop the prefrontal cortex. That's the executive brain. That's the brain that's in charge. That's the brain when connected with the heart can find the calmness, the peace, the compassion, the energy to put this part of the brain to rest. I'm not in danger, real danger. There's no saber toothed tiger chasing me. And that's the part of the brain that you're in control. If it's going to be, it's up to me. I'm in control of my own being, but we've got to activate the prefrontal cortex. And that's where oxytocin, those good feeling hormones get produced to calm our bodies. And again, that's a practice through breathing, through reflexology, through meditation, being in nature, taking a walk, uh, good conversations, those stimulate that prefrontal cortex. You know, something just popped into my mind as you were speaking, and that is that it gives new meaning to keeping this in the forefront of our mind. Oh, I love that. You just gave me the chills. Woo! Cool. That's right. We have to keep it in the forefront yes. of our mind because Correct. it's where all the magic can happen. The alchemizing of the trauma, the alchemizing of the separation. Oh, I'm getting God bumps now too. <laughs> the alchemizing of all that has kept us separate happens when we stay in the forefront of our mind and then the systems that have been created to support that alchemization, if that's a word, and then we can be free. That's right. That's Free right. To be peaceful. That's right. And that this part of the brain has controlled us longer than this part of the brain. So it's always that, as you said, keep it in the forefront of your brain. It's a practice. It is a practice. And we need to practice that every day to make this stronger than this. Practice, but also continually make that choice. So yes. even when it's difficult, even yeah. when it's challenging, even when it seems like you have to reach too far, right, to bring mm -hmm. it forward, mm -hmm. we must do that work. We must take those steps, go into that process, whatever it is, yep. and do so because it truly is for our highest good. It, it, it truly is, Marcy. That, that is where the magic will happen, and you'll find your peace. Um, and, and you will be in coherence. The, 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 the brain and the heart and the gut will be in coherence. And when you're in coherence, again, you, you're, you're in that flow state. You're in that synchronicity happens. Things happen. when It's a vibration. So, it, and, you know, I say this. I've been on the other side. I've been, uh, I grew up, both my parents are Holocaust survivors. I know what anxiety is because th their energy got really downloaded in me. So as a child, I was a, always a nervous wreck. Always, uh, my father died very young. He was a rageaholic. I mean, he was, I can't even tell you what he went through. And that affects generations. What we don't fix, our children will inherit. So it goes to generation to generation until we said, enough, I'm doing the work. So every day I journal, every day I meditate, every day I walk, every day, but I, I need to do this every day. And if I don't, if I have to skip, I know I'm okay. I, I do something for right. my higher good. Sure. So what are your recommendations for people? One of my recommendations for people is, is turn off 
the news, number one. Turn off the news. It's all negative, negative. And it's going to uh, contribute, unless you have a very strong constitution that you can handle it. Uh, but so many people today are just, just not handling it. So turn up the news. Turn on the music, whatever you love to listen to. Dance. Dance. Fe what makes you feel good? Skip. Play. Have fun. You love to cook. You love to paint. You love to draw. You love to... Whatever it is, find what you love to do and do more of that and, and start where you are. Start little. Turn off the news. Breathe. Remember to take those nice, deep abdominal breaths. Um, I'm, I'm definitely for movement because we, we hold our energy in our body, so it's somatic. And um, stress and trauma is somatic. Post-traumatic stress is somatic. So move. You know, do some Tai Chi, get some punches out there, ah, ah, and make some noises, ah, get it out, get it out, push that energy out, because it's, it, it's, it gets trapped, and, and we get stagnant, and we get, you know, so, so relax, let it go, let it go, let it go. This is the perfect time, the leaves are showing us exactly yeah. how to let how go. How to do that, that's right. So um, nature is a great healer. Um, be still. And, and just feel your feelings. Allow them to bubble up and it get expressed in a healthy way. Yeah. Not as a victim. <laughs> That's outstanding. Thank you so much. You've brought so much to our audience to take into their hearts and to think about and to start to implement. Um, how can people find you so that they can reach out and get more of your wonderful oh, advice and wisdom. Thank you, Madison. You can reach me on my website, monicabennett.biz, B-I-Z. You can um, call me, 516-297-0672. I have was my- very generous of you. That's very generous of you. I, you know, I'll, I screen my calls, but I do pick up. And if you really are interested in doing some work, by all means, you can give me a call. And uh, yeah, so I'm wow. available. Well, that is absolutely wonderful. And of course, for all of you who haven't yet received your seven ways to cultivate peace or have gotten your copy of my peace pledge, please go to heartshiftcoach.com and just, you know, make certain that you're getting even the most minute little thing that will support you in creating more of this energy and compel you to create new addictions. Addictions <laughs> to feeling good, to yeah. letting your heart sing, your feet yeah. dance, yeah. You know, all of those things. And of course, to finding peace. So as I have for the past 23 days, I'm going to recite my peace pledge with you. Mm -hmm. And I think that you know by now how seriously I take this. And it is my endeavor to continue to generate more and more peace within me so that the ripple effects of it go out into this magnificent world that we live in. So here we go. I pledge to extend peace through my entire circle of influence through cultivating first my own peaceful heart, my clear intentions, and taking personal responsibility for my beliefs, my thoughts, my choices, my actions, and my experiences, being able to observe them and say, is this for my highest good and the highest good of others? And if that answer is no, taking responsibility for shifting my energy knowingly that it will create and produce a better experience for all. And of course, it will lead me to taking compassionate mm -hmm. action. And so I take this peace pledge and I pass it from my peaceful heart to yours mm -hmm. and to yours, Monica. And I am sharing this energy, which is pure love, beginning on the inside 
So of course, peace in, peace out. Peace out. Right? And until next time, just know that I carry you all in my heart. Mm. So many blessings to you. And thank you so much again, Monica, for being here. It's been an absolute delight. Thank you so very much. Bye, everybody, until next time, which is tomorrow. <laughs>